evening everybody, Calm Biker here. Just on a quick evening ride, re-recording some videos that were ruined by a fly splat. I don't think I'm going to get them all done tonight to be honest, but I've done two of them. So this is going to be the third of four that were ruined. What I want to talk to you about today is something that I've talked about in the past. Uh, briefly mentioned, I said I might do a series of videos on it. I've decided I'm going to do a series of videos on it. And it's a document called Full Control, which is based upon a document originally created by the Norsk Motorcycle Union. And once these lights go green, I shall tell you all about it. Okay, so, Full Control, the English version of this original document. I assume it's an English version. I've not actually got hold of the uh, original uh, version, but and even if I did, I wouldn't be able to uh, read it because I don't read languages very well apart from English. So this document is a document that talks about the physics of riding a bike and how to use those physics to get a conscious, precise riding style. Um, I'm using those words straight from the document, I think. Conscious and precise being the, the key words. So. I find that a lot of the riding I'm doing is very unconscious. It has to be. You know, you're trying to concentrate on too much to be concentrating on actually riding the bike, if that makes any sense. So I'm looking at this uh, 4x4 on the right and the car coming towards me and what's in my mirrors. These are the things you need to be consciously aware of. So everything else has to be unconscious, otherwise it's taking up too much of your time, isn't it? Or too much of your ability to think. Of course, when you first start riding, all of that stuff is conscious, which is why it's easy to get into scrapes and near misses and that kind of thing. So, when Full Control talks about conscious, precise riding, what it's really talking about is precise riding, I believe. So it's getting yourself uh, training yourself, really, so that every corner you take, every acceleration manoeuvre, every braking manoeuvre is the, the best one for the bike. The safest one, the most appropriate, the best performance, however you want to put it, but the best one. Because right now, I'm just turning, I'm going around a bend, but I'm not even thinking about it. Um, and I'm doing it sloppily, I know I'm doing it sloppily, and I want to improve. So, I'm going to do this series of videos. I'm going to talk about the things the document talks about. So, in each video, I'm going to talk about a bit of the physics of the bike and the riding. And, a, and then I'm going to do an exercise from the document. There are eight steering exercises. Uh, no, there aren't. Sorry, there are six steering exercises, six braking exercises. I think it's four acceleration exercises, but it might be three. And three exercises to be done off-road, but that might be four. But it's, it's roughly that many. And the idea is to do these exercises completely consciously. So it's all about things like, I mean, on the very simple steering ones, weighting a peg before you counter-steer and then more advanced body position before you start steering and consciously picking a steering point before you start steering and all this kind of thing. Uh, they start simple and you add, with the uh, additional exercises, you add something every time. So I can't remember what they all are, but the first one is, uh, I believe, is the um, anchoring yourself correctly with your foot. And then it goes on to start thinking about where you're pointing your head and where you're looking and how you're using your peripheral vision for steering as you add through the following exercises. As I say, I'm, I'm doing this to improve my own riding because I know my riding is sloppy and can be improved. And if you can improve something, I think you should. I'm not doing it to say to you that you should improve your riding. There are a lot of people out there with a, a lot more riding experience than, with, than I have got who are a lot better at riding than I am, who I could learn a lot of. But I'm going to take you through the journey with me uh, and just tell you what I get out of it. 
and uh, if you decide you want to do it too I'll put a link to the document so you can get hold of it so you can do it too and you can tell me if you get the same things out of it or other things um, or if there are other tips and tricks that you think I should try because in the end riding a motorbike is massively rewarding and I think the better you are at riding it the more rewarding it is also riding a motorbike can be very dangerous but the better you are at controlling the thing the much less likely you are to have an accident so you know these can only be good things can't they and if they're not I can always discard them and move on to something else so I'm going to go through these exercises I'm going to do them consciously on quiet roads with the aim of training myself to do the same things unconsciously um, and get better one thing the document talks about is uh, that the, the original Norsk Motorcycle Union believes that people get on with riding and don't have accidents mainly because they have very wide safety margins so you know they will uh, they will ride in a way that means they are very unlikely to have an accident which has got to be a good thing of course and um, you know clearly I don't want to make myself less safe that would be really really stupid but the key part is that if you can ride without the need for such wide safety margins if you can ride within a narrower margin that when the unexpected happens you should be a lot safer you know, you should be able to deal with it with your conscious training coming in unconsciously you should be able to deal with those problems much more safely um, a good example of that I think from the eye to eye training course I did where we did hazard avoidance and um, what they called advanced braking or well, it was a, a quite a beginner's course really but the braking exercise we were doing allowed us to stop in an amount of time that was much shorter than anyone imagined. Now I've talked about that before, I'm not going to go into it again, but when you actually start looking at the videos of accidents, I try to look at them from a point of view of seeing what I can learn from them if I see an accident. I don't like the fatal ones and I don't like the gory ones, don't be sending me to them. <laughs> but when you see somebody have a, a collision on the road, I try and see what I can learn from that and you find that most of them are, are probably avoidable if you had done the right thing but of course in a panic situation unless you've trained yourself to do a certain thing you won't you'll just do what you always do and you see it a lot with the one we were doing on the eye to eye which was mimicking what happens when at 30 miles an hour somebody pulls out of a side road in front of you and you see it very often on the videos somebody pulls out they're 20 meters or more away and the person's in town doing 30 miles an hour and they scream and swear and shout um, and hit the car and they hit the car for no reason whatsoever because they could have either stopped or they could have slowed down to the point that they would worked out whether the car is going to stop or not and then decided which way to go to get around them but they don't and the reason they don't is they're not practicing I believe now I might be wrong on this so don't hold me to this but I believe it's because they haven't practiced emergency stopping because if you've got 20 meters to stop from 30 miles an hour I mean that that is ridiculously easy ridiculously easy if you've practiced it and yet you see it over and over again that people can't or don't not that they can they can they just don't or they lock up the front brake because they brake too quickly and again it's that's because that's your natural reaction and a lot of riding a motorbike is trying to overcome those natural reactions so and you do that with training so there you go that's I'm waffling now so I'm gonna stop but that's um, that's the principle of why I'm doing this to try and improve my own riding and if somebody else gets something out of it all the better so I mean about 20 meters 20 meters probably from that tr tree to the uh, Stopping area, 30-ish miles an hour. From that tree. 
You can stop pretty quick, can't you? <laughs> I didn't actually try that hard then. The back wheel was bouncing off the ground, but um, I didn't try that hard. Anyway, that was a pointless demonstration there. Probably to be improved by the exercises on braking. So I shall stop talking. Um, I'm going to start the next video talking about the first steering exercise and the physics behind it. And I might do one exercise per video, I might do two exercises per video. I'm not really sure how long these videos are going to be once I've talked about the, uh, the physics bit as well. So it may well be one exercise per video. We'll see. But hopefully you'll enjoy them. Um, I'll label them all full control. I'll put them in a playlist. So if you want to watch them, you can. And if you don't want to watch them, you'll know which ones to skip. But hey! <laughs> so thank you for watching, everyone. Ride safe. And, uh, oh, it's raining. I shall talk to you all again soon.